Cash Color Camp is a high level of conversation on live hip hop daily TV. And I have my guest in the building. May I introduce yourself, Ense? My name is Ense Ufak. Born in Nigeria, raised on the south side of Atlanta. <laughs> That's yeah. the most random thing I've ever heard in my life. Uh, yeah, I, I run an organization called mm. the New Georgia Project. Yes, uh, it's the largest independent political organization in the state of Georgia. Yes, at one time we were bigger than the Democratic Party and the Republican Party of Georgia combined. Mm. And at one time I was an employee. Yes. <laughs> and at one yeah. time I was an employee of New Georgia Project. And I'm very proud of that. Yeah, I am too. I am too. I think I did good work. And, you did. And I saw recently you actually used my picture in promotional materials. Facts. Facts. <laughs> I was like, that's me. You give good photo. Yo, let me tell you something, a funny story about that picture, right? I actually hate going door to door to do anything. Like, I really, really, really despise that part. I could do a bunch of walking up to people, but for some reason knocking on somebody's door is weird to me. Right. I remember going up those stairs as the AJC reporter followed me thinking, hang, I really got to knock on this person's door. All right. <laughs> so I knock on the door and the lady comes out and she had a, a turban on and a robe. She was really not ready for the day. No. So, but I got this dude with the AJC with me and I'm sitting there like, all right, so there's a guy with a camera pointing at you and I got this form in my hand. Do you want to register to vote, ma'am? And she said at first, no. And then the dude from the AJC said, no, he's from the AJC. He literally put his badge in her face. She closed the door and said, I'll be right back. I turned the car and I was like, she ain't gonna be right. He said, no, wait, wait, wait. She came back hair pressed. Yes. Brand new outfit. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> she, was, she was 100% ready for this, man. It was hilarious. And she was the only door that opened. That whole complex, the only door that opened was her. Right on time, though. Right it on was, time. It gave you what you needed. It did. It did. Yeah. It gave us good good show. So, so for those who don't know, who are you, Insane? Um, So, like I said, uh, mm -hmm. born in Nigeria, yep. raised in South Atlanta. Uh, and I run an organization called the New Georgia Project. Um, to date, we registered 400,000 uh, black and brown Georgians yes. uh, to vote. Um, and we... I, hit 50,000 just in 2019. Congratulations. Yeah, we build apps and video games yes. and try to leverage technology yes. to overcome voter suppression. Yes, 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 yeah. and I do apologize for that. And I actually had an amazing time with New Georgia and when I was with New Georgia. Yeah. Um, but speak to us about how you found yourself involved with politics in the first place. You know, especially listening to your old DJ background and knowing you got some <laughs> rap bars in you. What made you get into politics? Uh, I mean, honestly, uh, so I'm an immigrant. Okay. I was born in Nigeria really? uh, and became a U.S. citizen um, when I was a teenager. Uh -huh. um, and so I, you know, my mom got a second job so she could hire a lawyer uh, so that we could, like, file the proper paperwork. And I was responsible for making sure she didn't embarrass me and we both passed <laughs> the citizenship test. Uh, and so just really starting to understand the promise of America mm -hmm. and how regularly our government breaks the promise oh. to its citizens oh. um, and figured, like, at some point, when I became an adult, that I would do something to make America live up to its promise. Okay, so Insta's out here trying to make America great again. Long story short. I mean, you know, minus the hats. <laughs> <laughs> it's just trash aesthetics. It really is. It really is. So it's great that, so you being an immigrant, and you actually, your mom worked hard, really, to help y'all. Matter of fact, right. she worked so hard that you couldn't embarrass her. Like, right. Yeah. right, right. I mean, I joke and say that, like, we are citizens because of me, but ultimately, um, it was because of the sacrifice that, yeah, that's, that she made. That that's real. So her sacrifice led to your actual itch to get into politics. Yeah. Well, I mean, and I feel like politics is just a tool. Yeah. Right. That ultimately, I want people uh, to be able to do more than just survive. That we want people to thrive. Yes. Um, and so we have enough, um, but there is an um, an unequal distribution of America's abundance yes. of our bounty. Um, and a lot of times it's based off of race and gender uh, and national origin and like honestly what family you're born in. And as we speak now, where you live. You know, and a 100%. lot of it has where you live right now. hundred yeah. um, percent. You know, your zip code can determine mm -hmm. um, your life expectancy. Yes. Um, or it is, it has been used to determine people's life expectancy. Um, how well students are going to do um, beyond like elementary school and middle school, et cetera, et cetera. And so, again, the idea was um, ultimately I believe that black people um, should be able to sort of experience joy and should be able to thrive in, area, in every area of their life. Yes. 
including in politics. Yes, yes, and I agree with you. And I feel like, again, y'all are doing amazing work when it comes to politics, it's when it comes to getting people out to vote. You know, mm -hmm. again, me being on the streets, I, I've seen that in with my own two eyes. Yeah, we have like 10,000 face-to-face face conversations <laughs> with people every week. Yeah, so if you see a purple and white shirt walking up to you, don't be scared. <laughs> right, <laughs> like, listen, we nice, we cool, we just wanna talk about building power. You know, and, and this is a side story, right before you came here, there's a rapper named um, Bob Lennon. He signed to Waka Flocka's label. And I told him you were coming here. He said, are those are purple shirts? And I said, yeah. Hey. He said, one of them done caught me already, bro. They caught me a couple days ago. <laughs> and got me registered this. to vote. We out here working. Yeah, y'all are totally out here working. And you're doing a lot of great work. And I think it's important for people to be in the faces of voters nowadays because there's so much stuff that's kind of that will detract you from voting. Mm -hmm. Especially for millennials. You know, you sit on Instagram all day or you sit on social media all day, you'll be more bombarded with reasons to not vote than reasons to vote. Right. Um, how hard is it for you to kind of connect with millennials when it comes to voting and get them on track to where they're understanding that voting it actually is something that does count and does matter? I mean, <clears throat> it's work, okay. yes. but it's not difficult. <laughs> but part of it is because, like, we don't lie to folks, right? So, you know, there's this thought that, like, uh, you often hear like your grandparents or people, your ancestors died for the right to vote. Yeah. And we've done a bunch of research, like testing messages, et cetera, and it doesn't work. Yeah. What works is that you connect people with their hopes and their fears mm -hmm. for themselves, for their families and their communities with voting, right? Yeah. So, because if you just tell people to look at the elections, it just, it requires explanation. How is it that Secretary Clinton got three million more votes than uh, our current president? Uh, so you have to talk about the Electoral College. Mm -hmm. And so those are not like fly-by-night conversations that you can have, you really have to, um, connect the dots and help people connect the dots for themselves. Yeah, you're right, because I, I look at it like this, and especially when I deal with people who I feel like are in their 30s, I'm shocked how many people don't know that the Electoral College exists or right. really didn't understand the process of elect of elections. It, it, it was kind of scary, especially being in the streets and seeing that so many adults, people I consider adult age people, have zero clue how politics work, especially right. um, national politics. Right. I mean, and, and we also tried to make sure that we center local issues. Yeah. So, you look at a place like Georgia where we don't have Medicaid expansion, right? Where we don't really have like the full implementation of Obamacare. Um, so we have 12 hospitals in rural Georgia that are about to close, right? Mm. And so when you think about somebody who, for example, say you had a heart attack and normally it takes the ambulance like 15 to 20 minutes to get there and then your local hospital is closed. So now it's an hour. Like people are legit so you're dead. going to die. Yeah, so you're dead. Right? Um, I mean, the minimum wage in Georgia is five dollars and fifteen cents. I think that people, th like the federal minimum wage is seven dollars and twenty five. And, and the state is five dollars. And five fifteen is Georgia's minimum wage. Oh, I'm blessed. I never had to do minimum wage in Georgia. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but my thing is, those things can change. But we have elected officials who are completely unaccountable yes. uh, to the people who live in their communities. Um, it's embarrassing mm -hmm. that Georgia's minimum wage is so low. Um, and so, you know, we are headed into a, a, what is promises to be a really contentious like presidential election, but we also want to focus on 2020 and what's happening in Georgia, yeah. right? You got, we saw them steal a governor's seat, right? Uh, you saw him ban abortion. He didn't even run on banning abortion, mm -hmm. and they banned abortion after six weeks and promises to lock up doctors and lock up pregnant women who don't want to, um, you know, continue their pregnancy. Um, so it's wild. We have local elected officials, um, again, who are completely unaccountable. And the only way that they continue to win is because they're cheating. Yeah, and, and Brian Kemp's trash. Like, oh. I'm not to be partisan, but Brian Kemp's trash. That's like, I remember when I, I used to actually work for another organization, Work for Progress, and I remember having to bring up voter registration forms to his office when he was still Secretary of State. Mm -hmm. And I remember walking in his office thinking to myself, how do you keep track of all this? This is like paper everywhere it doesn't seem like this rhyme or reason or anything right. and then it wasn't months later come to find out you actually lost like 20,000 votes. <laughs> so right. right. it, it wasn't you I mean when you walk in his office you would have knew you didn't lose them they were purposely not to be found like you yeah. would have walked in his office you couldn't find them. the first year we launched we registered 86,419 oh, people of color I remember. and by the voter registration deadline only 46,000 of them mm -hmm. had made it on the voter rolls so we hollered at him and was like where are our extra 40,000 people and they looked us dead in our faces and said, what 40,000 people? Uh -huh. um, and then turned around and uh, subpoenaed us and wanted all of our emails, all of our donors, every voter registration form that we had collected. They wanted us to turn over our computers. And obviously, we have really, really good.
get lawyers <laughs> who told them what they could do with their subpoena. Yeah, <laughs> we don't play those games. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Um, but the point is that, again, the only way that they can win now is that they can cheat. Listen, Georgia's going to be the first state in the Deep South with a white minority. So we're talking about 2024. So five years, yeah. uh, black and brown people are going to make up the majority of Georgians. Um, so what does that mean? Um, where I'm from, they say a dying donkey kicks hard, right? And so <laughs> what you saw in the legislative session last year was Republicans seeing the writing on the wall. Kicking hard. Kicking hard mm -hmm. and being hella desperate mm -hmm. um, in order to hold on to the power that they have. So we're coming for them and they know it. And Georgia's multiracial, multi-ethnic future is, is, is here. Yeah, and you know, speaking of, um, um, one of the things that hinders a lot of voting is, you know, long lines and certain things that's, that's, that stops people from even going through the whole process. And also voting machines. Fact. Yeah, we're running a situation where Georgia has a shitty situation when it comes to voting machines and, and even just where you can actually go vote. The fact they're changing places where you can vote, shutting down places. They are actively trying to stop you to do, from doing something. Absolutely. What is, what is um, New, Georgia's, New Georgia's stance on that when it comes to the um, broken voter machines, um, voter machines that never worked, and the polling places popping up and closing? Like, what's your stances on that? I mean, these are all tactics that are designed to depress voter turnout, yeah. right? So people got excited about the governor's race in 2018, mm -hmm. and so we saw historic turnout. Um, Abrams got more votes than any Democrat in the history of Georgia politics. That includes President Obama, who ran in 08 and 12. She got more votes than he did in 20, 2008 and 2012. And because they saw the writing on the wall, we saw them trying to close polling locations in yes. southwest Georgia in mm -hmm. the rural black belt. And when we pulled up on them, as we are known to do, uh, with a bunch of lawyers and reporters, their response was, well, we're closing these polling locations because they are not ADA compliant. So the bathrooms at the place where people go vote didn't have handrails. And so because they didn't have handrails in the bathroom, they shut down or they tried to shut down the whole polling location. And it was only in black neighborhoods mm. uh, that they did it. So um, and that's just another example of them trying to um, pit two marginalized communities yes. against each other. Mm -hmm. um, so we made our argument. Um, we found a little known clause in the Georgia law that says that if you got signatures from 20 percent, Yes, of the people. Yes, yes, I remember uh, doing those, those petitions. Mm -hmm. You got twenty percent of the people <laughs> yep. of voters to sign a petition. They'll keep the polling location open. Yes. So we do what we did. Yes. We knocked on doors. Yep, on uh, Sunday. <laughs> on a Sunday that happened. I remember knocking on doors on Sunday. Listen, yeah, democracy don't take the day off. No, it don't. No, it don't. No, it don't at all. And I was proud to do that because you're right. There's there's ways they're actually actively trying to suppress a vote and. I don't like that people are kind of volunteering not to do it at this right, point. You right. know, so that, that upsets me. Yeah, I think about that. When, I mean, so a lot of attention is focused on, for example, the people, the what they call Obama-Trump voters. Yeah. So like maybe, I don't know, 50,000, 100,000 people who voted for uh, Obama and then voted for Trump. Um, but what about the, like, tens of millions mm -hmm. of people of color who voted in 2012 who didn't vote in 2016, yeah. right? So that's what we're focusing on, okay. um, is trying to push people and... Voting, it doesn't have to be sexy. It's not supposed to be. It is what we do as a citizen. Yeah. It's how you express uh, your desires for your community. Yes, right? yes. So. And the sexy part is getting the sticker. Like, never never forget hey, about that. That's the take sexy part. Yeah, that's the sexy part. Right. But I know voter registration and voter and voter rights is one part of one part of the, um, what New Georgia Project does push. Another thing I do like, and I, had a, I didn't have a chance to go to it, was your... Um, Ending um, mass incarceration that you did with, with, with Pastor Warnock and Ebenezer. Mm -hmm. um, speak to us about that event and the importance of bringing up that conversation about what's going on with um, mass incarceration and ending this prison pipeline. Yeah, so uh, Reverend Raphael Warnock is the uh, senior pastor yes. um, at Ebenezer Baptist Church. And Ebenezer holds a, a really important place, obviously, in Atlanta history, but also civil rights history, right? Uh, I think Reverend Warnock is maybe the second, if not or third. He's like the fourth. I go to I go to Ebenezer. Okay. Yeah, he's like the fourth pastor there. All right. Since King mm -hmm. was assassinated. <laughs> That's crazy. Um and 
he, we were having a conversation uh, in 2018, and he believes very strongly that if King were still alive, that ending um, mass incarceration um, would have been like how he ended his life's work. Yeah, I and agree so, with that. Yeah. And so when we start thinking about, um, you know, that. Georgia has 25% of the, I mean, not Georgia, but the U.S. has 25% of the world's prison population, right? When you think about the profit motive and the profit incentive um, and building prisons and housing prisons, when you think about a place like California, for example, where, uh, you know, they haven't built a new uh, college or university in a decade, but they're continuing to build new prisons, right? And so that is an expression of our society's priorities. Um, and we, so we had this mass incarceration conference and we focused specifically on faith leaders um, because we've been doing these bailouts. Yeah. So ending cash bail has been um, some of the most innovative work that we've seen. I mean, basically, we live in a country where they say you're innocent until proven guilty. Yeah. Um, but if you get arrested and you don't have money to bond yourself out. Oh, you're sitting there. Then you're sitting there, mm -hmm. even though you haven't been found guilty, right? And so we want to get rid of cash bail um, because the thing is, if somebody's not going to show up for their court date, like, Alley, they're probably not gonna yeah. show up for their court date, right? <laughs> Even if they like mortgage their grandmama's house, yeah. right? And so again, if we really believe that uh, we are innocent until proven guilty, people shouldn't be sitting in jail because they can't afford to bail or bond themselves out. Yeah, it's a, it's another it's another system that that is is geared to not just even keeping, I feel like, black and brown people in jail. It's geared towards keeping people in jail overall. You know, there's definitely a monetary situation going on when it comes to building all these prisons. 100%. Know? So the Indian yeah. Mass Incarceration Conference was, we keep getting questions from community organizations, from churches, like, we want to take up an offering, we want to take up an offering just to bail people out. Yeah. And so um, while we are working in the legislature, while we're working in Congress to change these laws, you know, marijuana decrim decriminalization, et cetera, et cetera. Um, how can we free our people today, yes. right now? Yes. And so it started with um, Mother's Day uh, bailouts, yep. like bailing out mamas um, because they were just sitting there because they couldn't feel, afford their bail and their bond. We started doing Father's Day bailouts, and then it has really grown yeah. um, again as a way of people directly inserting themselves in the system and getting people free. Yeah, that's amazing. Like I feel like that's definitely again God's plan. Right. Because because when you see people, and it's like a couple of hundred bucks in some instances, yeah. like it, like literally five hundred dollars has kept people. And you know, you you got an hourly wage job, you got kids. Mm -hmm. You so say you're innocent, and you maintain your innocence, but you don't have money to bail yourself out. So you are no call to no show at work. Yep, lost so you job. lost your job. Mm -hmm who's gonna pick up your kids mm. so you may lose your kids um you two three weeks behind on salary and you don't lost your apartment i was gonna say eviction is right, right around the, right, right around, around, around the corner yeah. right for five hundred dollars yeah yeah right. and you watch um again it's, it's, it's a terrible system to have to, to have to have to go through because you had mentioned you hit the nail on the head there are people sitting in there right now for change Right. You know, and just simply because they can't afford the change to get out. Right. And it's, it's, it's a terrible situation. So I'm glad that y'all are working on that. Do you feel like any actual change was sparked that, that week that, um, the, that the events happened? Like, do you feel like the, the people who came to the events, they walked out of there feeling empowered to kind of make a change? Absolutely. We're already getting, like, you know, follow-ups from people all over the country because it was a national conference. Yes. Um, so, like, listen, we took up an offering for our church. We're going to go bail some people out. We're getting referrals from um, Legal Aid Society and from public defenders, like give us a case of somebody that just, you know, doesn't have it. Um, so yes, I think that people are learning, again, what you got to do to um, change the hearts and minds of legislators or fire legislators, um, but also what can you do today uh, to, to slow down uh, the massive incarceration system that our country um, like maintains. Yeah, man. Yeah. So um, coming up down the pipeline is a is a new election cycle. You know, 2020 is happening. Um, clearly, Trump is going to run to make we sure. We have 1,200 elections in 2019 in Georgia. So uh, mayor's races, city council races, school board races this November. There are elections every year in Georgia, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, um, so, yes. We're like getting ourselves ready and getting in fighting shape for 2020, but we are working on getting like 50 millennial 
mayors of color um, elected in small towns all across Georgia. South Georgia and places that folks have never heard of where this, the population is like 900 um, and we're running young black people. I love that. New Georgia just being petty. Like we just don't <laughs> uh, <laughs> just right. being petty. That's what we're doing. Listen, you want to be the mayor of Willacoochee, Georgia? Exactly. We got you. <laughs> we got you. Um, and so, but it's a way to build a pipeline, yeah. right? So. I mean, we think about Stacey Abrams' candidacy, and it was like revolutionary for a whole bunch of reasons, right? Like she's the first black woman to ever win a major party's nomination for yeah. governor, mm -hmm. right? There's never been a black woman in America's like, what, 240 plus years of existing? Um, there's never been a black woman that was a major party candidate for governor, right? She actually won. Uh, and she legit won, she won, right? And the election was stolen. Mm -hmm. um, but we need to create the conditions for all of the new Stacey Abramses to rise up, right? Yes. I think yes. that, you know, when people think about, like the story is still being written about the Obama years and the legacy, right? But the challenge for us is that we don't need like a messiah, right? Mm -hmm. We don't need like that one person that wears the right clothes and speaks the right way uh, in order to lead us. I feel like we come from a legacy, particularly like in Atlanta and in the South, where you have civil rights leaders, like who were mostly pastors, like straight pastor dudes <laughs> who wore hard bottoms, yes. trying to, <laughs> trying in, to in lead a heat. march, in the lead heat. a march in hard bottoms. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think that that's necessary. Yeah. And so that's why we're doing what we're doing with these mayor's races because we want everybody to feel like they can speak up for them, their families and their communities. That's awesome. You know, and again, I, I, I know because I had a chance to work with y'all, but that is amazingly, that's amazing work because it levels the playing field. What represent, Representation matters on so many levels. Right. And to see people who look like you on a local level in politics, it helps get other people engaged, involved, and interested in what's happening in their city. Right. And I feel like with, with local elections, that's the one thing that people fail to understand where your one individual vote does matter, you know? Oh my God. Fail to listen, miss that. Listen, your mayor, oh, do you live in Atlanta? Yes. Yeah. So your mayor, uh, Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms, yeah. mm. won by 759 votes. You was, have more followers. <laughs> you I are one of them. But you also have more followers on Instagram uh, than the margin <laughs> by which our mayor was elected. You're talking to my spirit right now because when I was <laughs> when I used to be in the field, I would say that to kids when they was talking to them, like, "Yo, yeah. you know, like we could the people in Kugota Compound on Sunday could elect a mayor." Facts. You know, big facts. Big facts. Like I watched, but even with Kasim Reed, the, when he, Kasim won last time over Mary Norwood, that was literally the difference was compound. Mm -hmm. Like if you just would have went to Gold Room on a Sunday, you could have pulled out more people to vote. Right. For them. Everybody pull up. We're going to vote. Exactly. Today. Exactly. <laughs> that could have really happened. That could have really happened. And I don't think people take it, take enough interest into local elections. But getting more people who look like you, the, the park cannons of the world, people involved who look like you and reflect your lifestyles and reflect what you believe in, that is the key to getting more of these kids involved and wanting to know about this. One hundred percent but also making sure that people understand why it matters like we found out that people don't really know what the lieutenant governor does <laughs> right we found out that people don't really know what the mayor does they don't even right? know how the lieutenant governor becomes the lieutenant governor <laughs> exactly. right and so like why would i vote if yeah. i don't know how it impacts my life yeah. right um you know people are super upset about the fact that we don't really have robust again medicaid um in georgia and but and so you know you throwing shots and being mad at congress and being mad at the president but the truth of the matter is that um at this point it's the folks in the gold dome yeah. downtown in atlanta yeah. that are leaving billions of dollars on the table like literally the federal government is like here are billions of dollars so that you can get your people health care and the folks in Georgia was like nah and the sad part is we're in a referendum state so it's not like we have to wait for them to do stuff hundred percent yeah and, and you know I, I have that conversation a lot when people ask when are we gonna have legalized weed in Canada and in Georgia I'm like ask your politician Fact. <laughs> that, Fact. That's, that's all on them they ain't got nothing to do with us I mean even look at how uh, medical uh, cannabis is being treated like yeah, they're slow yes. walking yeah, yeah. the process and dragging it out yeah. um, and, and again when we talk about power it's really frustrating and this is not a partisan issue because the truth of the matter is that while there are some Republicans that like hardcore want 
want to legalize cannabis in Georgia um, because they see a, a profit motive. Yeah, they see a profit motive. Right? That they can't get anything passed without having Democrats uh, join them. So one example, in 2018 in the legislative session, we were pushing to try to get equity language, right? So uh, the mm-hmm. idea that if you're going to give out these licenses for people to sell, that there should be considerations for communities Correct. that have been negatively harmed and impacted by this. We've learned from California. We've mm-hmm. learned from other states. Um, and we couldn't get Democrats to fight for it. They punted that all the way down the road. We couldn't get <laughs> Democrats to fight for it. And, the, and it would not have passed without Democrats' votes. So thinking about like them holding um, their caucus together and withholding their votes until they got equity language and they wouldn't do it. right? And so we're looking at a different, we're looking for a different kind of leadership. Um, folks who can have courageous conversations Mm -hmm. and take courageous votes and do the people's work right so and also and when you're doing the people's work it means working with people who sometimes you don't agree with and I remember you know a little background my father and my mother my mother's a Democrat my father was a Republican I watched my father vote for Reagan, Reagan, Bush, Clinton before he passed. The only Democrat I ever know he voted for was Dem- was, was Bill Clinton. Mm-hmm. But one thing he used to speak about heavy before he passed was how much people work together in Congress. He was like, you know, I watched, they, they have differences with people will at one point try to meet in the middle about trying to do some things. I feel like that is totally eradicated. You know, like, That's like not a thing. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a gang war at this point. You know what I mean? Everything is really like blue and red, and it's like, which side are you claiming at this point? Right. Do you feel like we'll ever get back to a, a sensible discourse in Congress and a sensible discourse in, in politics where you could kind of look past somebody just who's part of a party that you don't agree with, but also understand that you have a point that I agree with? I mean, I feel like some of this stuff is cyclical, okay. right? And so, like, we likely will return to a place where folks sort of move back towards the center on both ends of the spectrum. Um, but if you want to know how I really feel, I really feel like America is way too big to only have two parties. I, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Can I explain to you how I stopped? I wish I didn't live in Georgia at some points because I don't want to vote Democrat. And yeah. I don't feel like, like, even when Candace Jones was doing Black State, I thought that was the weakest move ever. Super weak. Like, are you telling me that? But so, also Candace Jones, though. Come yeah, on. Yeah, like, you're, I mean, come on. you're on your platform yelling to people, you need to leave the Democrats, and then what? Come to Republicans? So one group used to call us niggas. This group now calls us niggas. So what, we're making the, 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 the least, what we, you know what I'm saying? We're right. making the lesser of two Right. at this point legitimately well i mean that uh, lightweight that's one of the things that we are working on now we just started a new initiative called vibe okay. uh, which is a voting initiative and brothers engagement like don't think too hard about the acronym. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but the idea is that there's real concern that like even if just like five percent of black men mm-hmm. um drop out of the obama coalition yeah. that we could re-elect uh our current president it's a serious thing yeah. right serious serious think the small amount of numbers that we're talking about here but that's well, important but the real concern is that um, you know I'm hearing it from our organizers and staff and just dudes out in the field that they feel like presidential candidates and the campaigns mm-hmm. are not talking directly to black men about the things that they care about yeah. and so um, it's not I mean it's not necessarily that black men are going to start voting for Trump in waves but that they just will stop voting stop voting period yeah. right and so like how do you have those conversations like real talk with black men about um, you know the role of black men in public life mm-hmm. Right? Um, so, okay, people don't go to NAACP meetings anymore. That's fine. But, like, what are you, like, where do you go to build power? Where do you go to commune with your people? Like, how do you, how, how do you find your community? Um, and so we're hosting a bunch of town halls and like, again, uh, focus groups and we're doing a lot of polling because we actually care about this. And it's not about electing people, period. It's about having the full representation of our community. Now, I, rep- I, I really understand that as well because I remember being outside and, I, and I'm thinking of a story right this second. I was getting in this, I was getting a, a it was a, a man or woman and their kid. They was at a bus stop and I was getting them registered to vote. I asked, you know, are you registered to vote? I spoke to the dude first. And he goes on this long, like, diatribe about why I don't vote and I don't have to and this, that, and the third. But I thought a key thing that happened, his girl turned to me and said, I want to vote. So I gave her the paperwork. So he's sitting there filling it out. He's still having this whole conversation with me about why it's not a point to vote. Yeah. And as she handed me back that paperwork, I said, and that's why you see women running for office? This is why you see women in so many positions of power that you call yourself not be, not being um, 
a fan of. Mm -hmm. You need to get involved. You know right. what I'm saying? This, right. this, this right here. And I thought that was very telling. You're arguing me why it doesn't matter why your girl is actively doing this. Right. Right, right, right. Um, I think that you know it's now uh, the it's now the case over multiple cycles that Black women vote at higher rates mm -hmm. than any demographic, including white men. Um, and so, like, what does that mean, right? And what is it that Black women know that we need to share with our community at large, right? And so. Um, I appreciate you for engaging, homeboy. Yeah. Right? Because mm -hmm. some people would just like dismiss him and walk away. I think that people really need to be heard. And like, we want to have these conversations. Like, you want to go? Let's go. Let's get into it. Yes. Like, so, um, you know. I think back in like 2016, 2017, really when we stopped talking about like your ancestors was because we were in community with uh, like BLM, Black Lives Matter, mm. Movement for Black Lives. And, you know, we started talking like, listen, you know that you can't serve on a jury unless you're registered to vote. Yeah. And so like they're never going to call you to be in a jury room to deliberate over an officer involved shooting right because you're not registered to vote and i imagine that if you got called to do jury duty and the cop was on trial for killing an unarmed black man or an unarmed black kid um that you would bring your your experiences mm -hmm. and what you know about police interaction in our community to the delivery uh, to the to the jury deliberations right um and so you know that's persuasive for some people, but it's really about connecting the thing that people care about with voting. Yeah, you're right. And I, I can tell you right now, if I'm called for that jury, I'm walking up in there with hot wings in this face. Right, you guilty. <laughs> you guilty. You <laughs> he guilty. He looked guilty. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I believe in the rule of law. <laughs> <laughs> but I do, but yeah, but that was, that's something that does stick in my mind, that, that interaction I did have with that brother, because I felt like that's, he's not alone. No. There's a lot of brothers out here who are just honestly believing that the system does not work for them and never will. Right. But you're watching a lot of sisters say, I'm going to make this system work for me. Right. So we do have, the, I, I like the fact that you're trying to engage brothers. I feel like they, we need to get some dudes back active in organizing out here again. 100%. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%, yeah. man. So do you feel, um, there's a lot of controversies that's happening over voting, especially in our state. Do you feel like that'll hinder people coming up in, in 2019 and going into 2020? I think if we don't call it out, yeah. um, if we don't say like they are cheating, yes. and the only way that we can overcome their attempt to cheat is by having overwhelming turnout and overwhelming participation. Listen, you don't need to fall in love with your mayor. You probably not, they're not gonna let you hit. So like, <laughs> <laughs> why are you so obsessed with like how cool a person is are they accountable yeah. right like are they gonna make sure our streets are clean are they gonna make sure that uh, our streets are safe that our community that it's a community that we want to live in are they you gonna, don't need to fall in love with the person that you're voting for are they gonna govern by social media because I don't need Come no on. more people governing Come by on. social media just like I don't need people and I mean this with all sincerity I, I don't want to see people be able to black girl magic and black boy joy their way into offices Fact. they aren't they aren't um, Fact. they shouldn't be at you know what I'm saying? And I feel like we're so close to that that we're just going to defaultly, and I see it even in a presidential campaign right now, do not default vote for a black person because they are black. Figure out what the hell they do. You know what I'm saying? Before is, you hit, give them a, is a that, vote. Is that Cory Booker shade? No, it's Cory Booker and Kamala Harris shade. Uh, you know, that's what you mean. I'll, I'll throw it both ways. Cory Booker. Cory, I've been warning, I've been rooting for Cory for so long. Like, I'm literally that dude in the car. Like, I'm rooting for you. I'm Tyra Banks. Like, I'm rooting for you. I, I want you to be so much better. You. Yeah, I want you to be so much better. Kamala Harris, I've been blew up on that one. Like, yeah. what's, your, what's, your, what's your analysis? On her? Uh -huh. I feel like as a prosecutor, you did your job. Now, I need you to be proud of said job. And I feel like you keep trying to waffle between them. Yeah. You spent a lot of years being very proud of putting people behind bars, which I was glad she was called to the floor on that during the Democratic race, uh -huh. like during um, the, the debate. You put a lot of people behind bars, you were very proud of it. Right. Continue to be proud of it. Like, I ain't saying you don't want to be a, so maybe you had a change of heart, but continue to be proud of that. Like, I stood on my record because this is what I was supposed to do. I thought it was the right thing. Right. Don't pretend it didn't happen. Right. And that's the thing that kills me. Don't pretend it doesn't happen. I don't care you're an AKA, and I'm not black girl magic you into nothing. Tell me uh, what you do. I mean, listen, AKA. Listen. Hey, my sister's an Akka. Like, I, I, I respect them. Hey, look, I'm just saying, don't. I think, you know, and I told somebody this too. I said, Kamala Harris 
is this close to starting an AKA stroll on stage. She's this close. I want to see it. <laughs> She's I want to see close. it. I want to see it. Somebody's going to call out her, her qualification. Next thing you're going to see is a bunch of skiwis right. and pinkies in the it's air. Like, I heard you was paper. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 but that's no knock. Again, I'm not saying don't vote for these people. This is my personal feelings. Like, I just don't feel like, I don't want to get into that, that situation because I feel like we almost did that with Keisha Lance Bottoms. Like, do not look at actual records and look at what people have done like have you been in office even long like how long were you even a city council person like right. help me understand why i'm voting for you other than well she's a black person and you don't want mary norwood i don't even know why i don't want mary norwood I, we definitely didn't want mary yeah norwood. i mean i knew why <laughs> but, but give me a good reason like i remember speaking to this cop during that time and he had told me he was voting for mary norwood and me at the time i was like what's wrong with you why are you voting right. for mary norwood right. he said i don't even know nothing about keisha lance bottoms he said i've been living here my whole life he said i don't know nothing about that woman uh, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. But you can also look it up. Yeah, exactly. Cop. You can look it up, and I want people to do that versus just blindly saying it's the black person. I gotta go vote for you. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, and we we build solutions to try to help that. Yes. So if you go to the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store and download the New Georgia Project app. Oh, what a shameless plug. Yeah, I that, mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. Uh, it like we pull up. You put your address in and it pulls up a sample ballot for you because the other thing that we found out is that we tell people go vote go vote go vote and like in the context of a presidential election you know exactly. you have an idea who you're going to go vote for for president but then you get there and it's like a whole yep. book of other people that you need to vote for Who's the alderman? right right like, <laughs> like what okay okay dog catcher comp that's the thing right exactly what's a comp even do exactly um and so in the app it pulls up um, your sample ballot, so you get pictures of people side by side. Okay. Um, that's been really helpful for some of the young people yes, that we yes, work with, yes. like a white dude, people. young Latino <laughs> women. Okay. Um, I know where I'm going. Listen, I don't do take all the information that you need yeah. in order to make an informed decision that aligns with your values, yes. right? Yeah. Um, we also pull up people's voting records, right? So, like, you, you're not gonna finesse us uh, into <laughs> voting for you because you should you look like me they say everybody that's mm. our color ain't my kind everybody ain't your skin folk right exactly skin folk ain't skin folk. exactly yeah. um, and so we pull up again there's a photo there is their voting record and then there's a list of their donors like their uh, top 10 donors something else you need to know absolutely yeah, who's putting money in your pocket you running, being running for office is not and cheap. and the plan is to do it for every election yeah. right and so again letting people go and make informed decisions yeah. um, um, when they go vote um, so yeah uh, which also leads us to September 27th through 29th okay. um, we're having what's called a video game jam talk to us yeah, right talk okay so because this, this is a gaming place this is a gaming place yes. so um, the most popular video game titles on the market Fortnite Sims are all games where people create the world that they're playing in and so the idea is if we put a bunch of uh, black, Latino, Asian American, young people, millennials, people under 35 in a room with video game designers um, and programmers Ooh. and esports players, professional video game players, um, with our folks, our organizers, our staff, our voting rights lawyers, we put them on teams, they compete against each other to come up with video games that are designed to demystify how all of this shit works, right? That's to dope. peel back the layers so people understand how government works. But it's still gotta be a video game, that's right? Dope. That's dope, So that's happening at the end of September, and on, so we're gonna be locked in a room, basically, uh, a warehouse for three days, uh, again, with people that that are actually doing the code right there. Like a hackathon? It's a hackathon, okay. but specifically for video games. That's what's up. Um, and then on the side, we're gonna have a Madden tournament and a Tekken tournament. Oh, um, snap! Because uh, reaching out to the people from EA Sports and other publishing houses, that those are the games that black people play. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's what we're gonna do. Solid, solid. And say, I'm a huge fan of you, man. Oh, uh, yeah, thank you, brother. No I'm a problem. huge fan of you, and I'm so happy to see this platform that you've created. It. Thank you, thank um, you. And we knew you were special from the jump. Uh, you know, I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Fact. Speaking of special, your, your shoes. I mean, you know. Yo, her kid gave. Barefoot. Her I mean, kid I'm African, gave but. These, oh, don't do that. Don't do that. I'm African, but I can't be out in these streets with no shoes on. Don't do that. Somewhere Trump is ready to jump on that line. I told y'all. I told y'all that barefoot. All day. But I saw you with some off white Air Maxes, and I was like, you know what? Insane needs to stop playing. I mean, I mean. Add some off-white checks too. Mm. <laughs> what, what's your favorite sneaker? 
Really? Oh, the Air Mags. Really? I like what true. You got them on now. No, no, no. Air Mags. Oh. M A G S. It's the Back to the Future sneaker. Oh. The self lacing joints. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I just don't have 90 grand. Okay. <laughs> to, to, to drop them on. To drop on them, yeah. but they, um, I, I'm definitely like keeping an eye out. So, like, you, you know. You can expense account Anybody that? trying to trick on your girl. <laughs> you can't expense account that? Uh, I promise you <laughs> that if I spent 90 grand awesome. uh, from our budget on some sneakers, like, just. Get me out the paint. Gotcha. Well, we're gonna drop a cash app for her. Man. Let's, let's chip in and help her get some get some new right, sneakers, right. man. But and I definitely like. I definitely love your shoe game. I think that is very um it's very dope of you. Like it's, it's it's also you coming out there and showing people that you're not again just the typical lobbyist, typical activist coming through the doors. I also got some dope kicks. I mean, I, yeah, I do. I think it comes from like. Uh, immigrant parents who do not understand like youth culture and like sneaker culture and so um i never had a pair of like name brand sneakers when i was growing up and so like we bought like my shoes from kroger (laughs) (laughs) Uh, and then when i was in high school i worked at champs oh um and so like my first like legit job I mean, I like was a lifeguard and a kayaking and canoeing instructor. Oh, so and, you can swim? You bragging? I mean, you can't swim? No. Really? No. You're proud of it too? Like I am. No. no, not at all. I need to learn, but yeah. You should definitely learn how to swim. I don't know. How, what do you do when you do you beach? Do you go to the beach? Oh, how about this? Oh, I go in water. Like my mother is still a, a blown away by the fact I go on yachts, I go on boats, I went into a full body of water with my nephew, almost drowned. Like the, I remember the lifeguard and my nephew were looking at me from the side of the water trying to get up. And they was like, is he okay? And I'm just dog paddling. Just dog paddling to the side. Got to the side and said, yeah, I'm good. Let's do it again. I'm a thrill You should learn how to swim. Yeah, I should. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, let me stop bragging about that. I really should learn how to swim. Stop being a stereotype, man. <laughs> when it's all, you know, you, you, you've built a, a pretty successful career. You built a very, a very successful life and a very impactful life at that. Uh, when it's all said and done, what do you want to be remembered for the most? Uh, um, like I want to be remembered for um, being a fighter. Okay. Um, but like a strategic fighter and a strategic thinker. Um, I would want to be remembered for somebody like who led with love. Mm-hmm. Like I centered love for myself and love for my people in all of the work that I do. Right, and I got these Republicans out the fucking paint. Oh, <laughs> not, not saying we start a gang war, but some of y'all do got to get all the way out the paint. <laughs> all the way out of the paint. No, that um, you know, I, I, I um, oh, I also, you know, you, I think, I feel like are one of uh, our examples. But um, up to this point, we've hired and trained and deployed about 1,500 people uh, at the New Georgia Project. And that's really important to me because um, when I graduated from high school or when I graduated from college, I left Atlanta because I didn't think that I would be able to have a career in progressive politics in the American South. Like, so I lived in DC and did work there. I lived in Ohio and like worked presidential campaigns because Ohio is so like important and it's a battleground state, et cetera. Um, but you know, we put fifteen hundred people on with a full time like professional job in politics, in, in progressive politics. You really in the did. South. You really did. You really right. did. And I, I was impressed. I was glad to be part of that that system. I'm glad to be an alumni of New Georgia and Project. I still got we got to get jackets. Yeah, oh, we got to get jackets. Yes, man. I got to get a new shirt too. Can I get a shirt with my name yes. on the back or something? Like, Fact. Yes, absolutely. Like a, like a jersey or something. But I'm saying, what about Letterman jackets though? Like those sweet pe- purple oh, would, Letterman jackets with the white sleeves. Well, I feel like would you rock it? I would rock that. But if we can expense that, we can expense you. Some some, um, some sneakers. <laughs> we get Letterman jackets. I think we should be able to get you some shoes, man. Like, you definitely deserve it. <laughs> Thank you. You definitely deserve Thank it. And say, um, before you leave, um, let people know how they can get involved with New Georgia Project, whether it be volunteering or just even, you know, any any way they want to get involved. How yeah, can so... <clears throat> Video game jam, September 27th to 29th. Um, come, go to our website, newgeorgiaproject.org, um, and sign up for our mailing list. We put out volunteer opportunities every week. Um, we have offices in five cities across the state of Georgia. We're likely going to double that by the time um, 2020 rolls around. Right. Um, so, yeah, we are on social media, so Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, all New Georgia Project.
That's solid, man. Well, you know, I'm definitely a supporter of you. Anything you need from me and Cash Color Cannabis that I can do, you definitely have my support. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much, Insay, for coming through. And Thank that's you. Cash Color Cannabis, a high level of conversation sponsored by Georgia Hemp Company.